Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Okay, welcome in. It is Talk of the Town on location this morning. We are live at Krispy Kreme here on Friday morning, October the 17th. Welcome in. Glad to have everybody with us this morning. We got Trent McGee here this morning. How are you, McGee? Good to see you. Nice to see you. And from WITN this morning, the general manager of our local Eastern North Carolina NBC affiliate, Mr. Mark Gentner. How are you, G-Man? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Happy fall to you. This is going to be a beautiful fall weekend. I don't think the weather can be much better. I'm looking out the windows here on the 10th Street, outside the Krispy Kreme windows, through the hot light, and I see nothing but blue skies and not a cloud in the sky anywhere. It's going to be beautiful, McGee. Yep, it's gorgeous. I know that some of the uh, some of, there's some golf tournaments around. I know the Ironwood uh, member guest is this weekend. Correct. We're going to have a great weekend that's, for that's it. That's a big weekend, yeah. Yeah. Got perfect weather for it. Temperatures today going to be in the mid-70s, and then on Saturday, mid-70s, and then on Sunday, it's going to cool down another 10 degrees. It'll be only about 65 degrees. A lot of things going on. We just found out uh, Sunday is the uh, annual Babe Ruth Home Run Derby at Guy Smith Stadium. Uh, I'll give you a telephone number if you want to call and register. You can go out there and try your hand at hitting some home runs. They move the fence around for that, don't they, McGee? Yeah, I, I, they will. For the guys who are a little bit older than I am, they do. They'll move it in. But um, you have, high age and down, no, you're Have going. you done that before? I have. You need to go Sunday. Uh, you can register by calling Clay Medlin uh, at 714-1242. The registration, or you can register on location that starts at noon on uh, Sunday. If so Clay the and RV will let me hit from behind second base, <laughs> and I mean closest to center field, I will participate. All right, we're excited because Lincoln Riley is about to be here. Lincoln is going to be here in a few minutes, and Lincoln Riley, of course, is the uh, very successful offensive coordinator for the East Carolina Pirates. He's one of the hottest names in college football this year with the great year that the Pirates are having, 5-1. and one. Of course, we got UConn coming to town on Thursday night. We also have tickets here this morning. We're registering to give away tickets for the game, and anybody that comes to Krispy Kreme between now and 9 o'clock gets a free donut. The Crispy Screams are out. These are the Halloween donuts. They've got their traditional Halloween donuts, but they also have uh, they've got the new Ghostbusters in celebration of the 30th anniversary of Ghostbusters. Boy, it didn't seem like 30 years ago, does it? I know. 30 yeah. years? Crazy. McGee, how old were you when the Ghostbusters came out? How old are you now? I was two. Seriously? Wow. That's crazy. I'm old. <laughs> 30 years for Ghostbusters, it doesn't seem like, but they got the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man donuts, and they got the Ghostbusters donut with the green slime on it, uh, and uh, they're very popular. People are getting, and you can get one for free this morning if you come in and um, and just ask for it and tell them that you're listening to Talk of the Town. And, Lincoln uh, Riley was two, two when it came out as well, wasn't that good? Mm, that's a sobering thought. Uh, yeah, Link, Lincoln is... Um, you know, Lincoln's name keeps coming up. His name got thrown around. Should we ask him about this, or is it too sensitive in the middle of the season? His name was thrown around as potential for the SMU job. You know, I heard they were also interviewing uh, Mac Brown. Really? Mac Brown. What can Brown do for you? Larry Brown, Mac Brown? <sighs> Look what he did for Texas. Of course, he had a good run there before he things went sour. Run. Yeah. I saw that uh, Trey Holtz is now playing for the University of Texas. Skip Holtz's son. Remember Trey? He was here. Wow. I just yeah. remember Trey running around as a kid. Yeah. He was a reserve quarterback. He's at UT? <laughs> he's at UT. You know, he's wow. on, he, let's say this. He's on the roster at that the is, University of Texas. And, uh, yeah, that's the deal. Wow. So, um, Texas, kind of an interesting thing. And, of course, um, I you know, I think Lincoln Riley is going to be one of those guys that a lot of teams would like to have based on the offensive production. What happened to Virginia Tech last night? They, they got beat, couldn't didn't score. they? Couldn't score. Scored 16 points. They what was the final score in that game? 21-16. They just could not score the football. It was a hard game well, They're to out watch. of running backs, right? But is that is that what's wrong with them now? Uh, well, they're young, too. I think they're really young with their, in their skill positions. But 
their running back positions hurt them quite a bit. Defensively, they're still, they're still really good. Uh, I got invited to the uh, Georgia Tech-Carolina game Saturday night, and for about five seconds I actually considered it. But I was thinking to myself, I don't, you know, I don't really care about going, but I was just going to go as a guest just to go to, you know, see folks. But uh, I was thinking, man, that could get ugly, right? Yeah. And Carolina's and defense Carolina and Georgia Tech's score offense. 60 points, you know, and 30 in the first half. It could get really ugly. I will say, though, North Carolina uh, really gave uh, Notre Dame a tussle. They did. Which, they, that's, that was – that was – that, that – I'm still confused about that. Because, you know, in the, in the total yardage, North Carolina was practically even with Notre Dame when the game was over. You know, the only thing I can figure about that is that Logan, Steve Logan is right, that Notre Dame, he, he, he says they were, he said these words, he said, Notre Dame is a fake. Yeah, they're overranked. He's always felt that way about Notre Dame. I, 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 <laughs> I think, though, they'll play FSU very close this weekend. Do you really? I do. That'll be a close game. It's just the way college football has gone this year. It'll be a close game. Could be another topsy-turvy week in the uh, top 25. Here's the thing. Will East Carolina move up in the polls this weekend just by not playing? Hmm. Well, you know, Good that question. does happen. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But then they're playing Connecticut. It's what, 1-5 on yeah. Thursday? Uh, how do you keep going up if the teams you're playing have those kinds of records? Because the teams uh, above you are losing. Yeah. Yeah. They're a good point. And you're winning. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. East Carolina, of course, do, does play. Is that game on ESPN? U. ESPN U. It's another U game. We've been on ESPN U. We're living on ESPN U mm-hmm. this year. Yep. Uh, ESPN U on uh, Thursday night, ECU and UConn. And am I right about this? This will be the first time East Carolina's ever played UConn? Yes. I think I'm right about that, aren't I? Wow. We? Yep. You know, obviously, it's we played everybody matchup. else in uh, the American. Uh, because uh, we played South Florida. We obviously used to be in the same conference with Cincinnati. Although, I don't know if we've ever played Temple. I oh, actually, we have played Temple. We played Temple in the uh, Logan years. I remember right around 93 or 94 we played Temple. We had never played Central. Yeah. Who we opened the season with. That was the first ever matchup. So. North Carolina Central, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that game's coming um, next Thursday night, and we're excited about that. Again, Lincoln Riley will be our special guest here coming up in just a few minutes. A couple other things to uh, mention to you. We mentioned um, – yeah, I saw that you pulled up on your computer the Time Magazine article. I guess it's out on newsstands. I'm going to have to go by Barnes & Noble or somewhere today and see if we can find it. Uh, I don't yeah, – the, uh, the writer for Time Magazine – was traveling around with Rand Paul when he came to Greenville, and he told us that he was writing a huge story about Rand Paul. Well, it's this week's cover story, and so I, I, I am uh, I am suspicious that there may be pictures from Greenville. Uh, and and again, they he uh, I told you the uh, the author the, the writer interviewed me. He interviewed other people. He he interviewed Walter Jones. Uh, wife Joanne at that event that night as well because I remember him and I was I kind of was standing there and listening to the questions that he was asking Joanne and he was asking Joanne about how difficult the primary was with Walter Jones this year with Taylor Griffin and so that's not the uh, that's not that's not going to be the the uh, theme of the article but he might include some of that as well so we'll see but uh, again the uh, the writer Michael Shearer has agreed to come on the show and so I think next week I will get Michael Shearer on the phone. Uh, and she's, uh, he's, uh, he's given me his number and said, when the article comes out, if you want to do an interview, give me a call. That's nice. I mean, That'd be that, kind of cool. He yeah. was a very nice guy. Hopefully he didn't hack me up in the uh, interview. So <laughs> the fat radio guy from Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> but he, uh, he wanted the link to my interview with Rand Paul, and he said he was going to watch that. And he might – I don't know. I just don't know what he used – because you cannot read the article right, unless you, you subscribe to Time Magazine online, and I'm not doing that. Yep. I'm just going to go buy the just go buy the magazine. But that is out right now. What else is going on? What else do we need to talk about this morning? Seems like there were some other things. Again, Lincoln Riley will be here in just a few minutes. Why don't we go ahead and um, uh, I'll tell you. Let, let's uh, let's grab a break and then we'll try to get. Um, Try to get Amanda on for a minute, and then Mark will bring us up to date on WITN News Headlines. Live on location this morning, Friday morning on the road. Beautiful Friday morning. 
we got a great crowd in here already. Come on in and join us live at Krispy Kreme in uh, Greenville on uh, 10th Street. And we will be here until 9 o'clock, and we're giving away donuts this morning. If you come in and say you're listening to us, you get a free Halloween or Ghostbusters donut just for saying you're listening. And, again, uh, we're going to be here till 9 o'clock. Take a break and come back. Stay with us. More Talk of the Town live on the road this morning. Well, we knew we were going to have a big celebrity here this morning when uh, we um, got Lincoln Riley to agree to come by, but we didn't know that um, we would have a bigger celebrity. Tavares from the Sean Hannity Show has just walked in. <laughs> Tavares, you'll get no airtime and like it. <laughs> he does have his Panthers jersey on today, though. That's a good thing. Welcome back to uh, Krispy Kreme. We're on location this morning at Krispy Kreme. ECU Offensive Coordinator Lincoln Riley will be with us in a few minutes. Giving away tickets this morning as well to the ecu UConn game on Thursday night. And, of course, we're also giving away donuts. We're giving away Halloween donuts and Ghostbusters donuts. You just come in this morning, say that you're listening to us on the radio, and you will get a free Krispy Kreme donut. One of the uh, Halla uh, what is it called? Krispy Screams. Krispy Screams. Krispy Screams. And Amanda Tilly, the owner of Krispy Kreme, is here with us this morning. These things are really beautiful. Thank you. We were, yeah. I, I talked talk to the person that's technically called a processor and said, we're going to upgrade you to Artiste. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, these I, are Artiste. I think it's catching on. So. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, right. they are great looking donuts. They're a lot of fun. So these are, uh, these are, yeah, are these very popular during this time of year? Uh, they are. Um, the Ghostbusters, this is our first time doing those, celebrating the 30th anniversary of the movie can't believe it's been that long i know we just um, said that and they um so we're, so we're having a lot of fun with those um and you also have i noticed that we also have pumpkin shape we do and we, you we, have we, pumpkin we, spice donuts that's which right is, we have, that's the other big yeah, thing we have pump, pumpkin spice we have a pumpkin cheesecake uh then we then we have our halloween lineup which is the spider webs the jack-o-lanterns the sprinkles and then the ghostbusters donuts. but you have the stay puff marshmallow the man. Stay puff marshmallow man you have the ghostbusters ghost with a with some green slime that's right got the cobwebs and then just some decorative sprinkles that look that's like right. halloween that's right. kind with of a halloween palette if we have artistes we have palettes yeah. <laughs> All right, good stuff, and uh, this is a great time of year to uh, come into Krispy Kreme. We talked to you earlier about, I mean, people go nuts over pumpkin spice this time of year. They do. It's and our so, most popular yeah. limited time offering. So we have that through How Thanksgiving. Much? Thanksgiving, so they'll mm -hmm. last for uh, another month and a half. Yep. All right, very good. What else is going on? Anything else it's you just, need to promote? It's a, it's a great time for fundraising. So, yeah. so if, if, you, if your school group or your church group's got a trip coming up or you need new uniforms and need a quick, good way to raise funds, just give us a call. All right, and um, Amanda's giving away donuts this morning. Come, come see us. Just come in and say you're listening. You get a free Halloween or Ghostbusters donut this morning. That's right. Sounds good. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us this morning. All right, let's check some news headlines now. Again, Lincoln Riley will be here in just a few minutes, so come on down and join us. If you want to meet Lincoln, if you've never met him before, he's going to be here live at Krispy Kreme in just a few minutes, 21 after 8 o'clock. Time for our news headlines now from WITN. And with that, here is Mark Gentner. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Henry. Thank you. The former mayor of New Bern is headed to jail after a jury found him guilty of DWI. Lee Bettis was mayor of New Bern when he was arrested last year in Havelock. His wife's two children were in the vehicle when police stopped him for erratic driving. Jurors also found him guilty of reckless driving to endanger and two counts of misdemeanor child abuse. They deliberated just over an hour in the case. The owner of the Greenville Halloween Express says the manager of her store was run over twice by the vehicle of two women fleeing the store after stealing a costume. Lisa Cartwright tells WITN Renee Young suffered a broken leg and a head injury while trying to get to the license plate of the accused shoplifters. Cartwright says the suspects had taken a costume worth about $40. Greenville police have charged 18-year-old Maya Phillips of Winterville. Phillips has charged a misdemeanor larceny, felony hit and run, assault with a deadly weapon, inflicting serious injury. She's being held at the Pitt County Detention Center under a $100,000 bond. 20-year-old Kashira Barrett of Greenville is charged with felony accessory after the fact hit and run, and she is being held at the Pitt County Detention, Detention Center under a $10,000 bond. A national report released Thursday by the Center on the Budget and Policy Priorities out of Washington, D.C. revealed that states are providing less per pupil funding for kindergarten through 12th grade than they did before the recession seven years ago. According to research, only six other states are worse than North Carolina in the percent change in spending per student from before the recession to now. The report does say that most states increased 
their per pupil school funding in the last year. However, North Carolina reduced funding and was the second worst state according to the study. Looking for an excursion this weekend? The annual Smoke on the Water Festival takes place this Friday and Saturday along the Washington waterfront. Fun kicks off tonight where, with music in the streets and a pig parade. WITN is once again a proud sponsor of the event, and the festival benefits a wide variety of local community initiatives like the Red Cross and the Boys and Girls Club. And that's your WITN News Update. All right, very good. Our news update uh, this morning brought to you by Yadkin Bank. There's a new name in Eastern North Carolina banking, but it's the same great folks you've already known with the same great service as Vantage uh, Yadkin Bank. It was Vantage South Bank. Now Yadkin is here with locations all over Eastern Carolina, uh, several locations in Greenville, Moorhead City, and Jacksonville all over the place in Eastern North Carolina. Yadkin Bank. For commercial or personal banking solutions, get to know the name Yadkin Bank. Here's our weather update, uh, sunshine and 75, the high today, tonight clear and 55, uh, 76 and sunny tomorrow, looks like a beautiful day, and then sunshine, mid-60s on a Sunday, it's going to be a little cooler, temperatures, by the way, on Saturday night into the 40s, that might be the first time we've been in the 40s. I think it is. And uh, Monday looks good, too, in the 70s, so the next several days, the weather is going to be fantastic. All right, let's get a break in. We're coming back. Link has got a note from Lincoln Riley. He's running a little bit late, but he's going to be here in just a few minutes. Stay with us. More talk of the town on the way here live at Krispy Kreme. Great crowd of folks. Come get a free donut this morning. Meet Lincoln Riley. Lincoln's going to be here in about 10 minutes. And we will continue live at Krispy Kreme right after this. Okay, welcome we'll back. We're on location this morning live at Krispy Kreme. It is talk of the town on the road. Good crowd in here now. People have come by to meet uh, Lincoln Riley and register to win tickets to the uh, game on Thursday night, East Carolina UConn, and also to get some free Halloween donuts this morning. All you got to do is come by and say you're listening, and you will get a free Ghostbusters or a Halloween donut. And have you had one yet, McGee? I have not, but I've been eyeing those three right there on top. Interesting. Uh, Lincoln Riley uh, is on the way. We're going to have him on in just a couple of minutes. Let's check right now and see what's going on in the world of sports. McGee, um, big matchup in the uh, AAC tonight, the American. We finally, uh, this game's going to be on TV, I believe. We're going to get to see Temple on TV tonight, and that's the team we're beginning to hear about. Yeah, Temple right now 2-0 and uh, in the American Inns. They take on Houston at 9 o'clock. So. All right, here's McGee on sports. Yeah, that game coming up at 9. ESPNU will carry that game, Temple and Houston. Right now the standings in the American Conference have ECU, Temple, UCF all unbeaten, Temple 2-0, ECU 2-0, of course, and UCF 1-0. Houston right now 1-1 again, Houston and Temple tonight. That game at Houston, American Conference matchup, 9 o'clock on ESPN. It'll be a close game to watch out for with Temple coming up uh, after UConn for East Carolina. College football scores from Thursday night. Virginia Tech fell to Pittsburgh 21-16, 4-3 now uh, are both of those teams in the ACC. Number 20, Utah got by Oregon State 29 29- 223 over in the NFL Thursday night. Tom Brady, big night, three touchdown passes as the Patriots beat the Jets 27 25. A blocked field goal by Chris Jones there uh, as time was expiring was what propelled the Patriots to a 27 25 win over the Jets. Uh, Chris Johnson, 61 yards on the ground, former Pirate running back uh, for New York as they now fall to 1 6. The Patriots are 5 2 on the season. High school football week eight. All six Pitt County teams are in action tonight. Three and four, Aiden Grifton welcomes two and five South Lenore. Six and one, Farmville Central entertains one and six, North Johnson. Two and five, North Pitt plays host to four and three, Bettingfield. South Central on the road to 0 and seven, Southern Wayne. And five and two, Conley will visit four and four, CBA Cock again. Rose Eastern <laughs> Wayne tonight. That game will uh, kick off at seven o'clock on 94.3 the game. 630 is the pregame coverage. Patrick Johnson and Jay Sonhalter on the call there. And baseball from Thursday night, the Giants beat the Cardinals 6-3. to Travis uh, Ishikawa hit the first homer to end the NLCS, a 3-1 shot that sent the Giants to the World Series. They would take on the Royals, which begins Tuesday night uh, there in uh, Kansas City. And the college basketball preseason top 25, Kentucky number one, Arizona two, Duke three, Wisconsin four, and Kansas rounds out the top five. All right, that's our sports update brought to you this hour by Seaboard Security. Remember, if you don't have security, at your home, you're taking a big, big gamble. Everybody needs a security system at their home, and so all you have to do is contact Seaboard Security. My buddy Bill Boone down in Washington. Website is seaboardsecurity.com. 
and uh, they will take care of you. They've got over 50 years' experience. Folks, if you've got, uh, if you've got no uh, security system at your home, it's 2014. Come on, we've got to get with the program here. And uh, I've, I deal with these guys. These are the guys uh, that uh, I've known Bill Boone for a long, long time, and Bill uh, runs the company there. He owns Seaboard Security. Uh, and um, very reputable. You're dealing with local Eastern North Carolina neighbors when you're dealing with seaboard security. And uh, I can vouch for Bill Boone. You can trust him. He's a good guy. And when you need uh, help, they're going to help you. You're not going to be dealing with somebody uh, at a phone bank somewhere in Iowa. You're going to be dealing with Eastern North Carolina neighbors, people that live right here uh, in your neighborhood. So seaboard security. Go and uh, check them out at seaboardsecurity.com. Uh, 28 in front of 9 o'clock. Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator for ECU, on the way this morning. Good crowd of folks in here. We're registering uh, people to win tickets to ECU UConn. All sorts of celebrities in here this morning, including Tavares <laughs> from the Sean Hannity Show. I haven't heard you on recently. About, you, about two weeks ago. Were you on two weeks ago? Yeah, about two weeks ago I was up there. So they, they actually call you to go on. You don't call them. No, nah, I don't call anymore. You got, you got Sean's cell phone number? Uh, no, not, 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 not yet. <laughs> not yet. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get him here. You know, McG Greenville. McGee, uh, at one time, uh, Tavares had made a commitment that he was going to get Sean Hannity to Greenville. I think he did try. But he, he's never done it for us. He, he's not, I mean, we've had a lot of the, big, the bigs come through here. We just yeah. had Rand Paul. Yeah. We've had Laura Ingram. We've yeah. had Mike Huckabee. Yeah. It was up to you to get Sean Hannity. Yeah. You've, you've, you've let us down. He's ducking me. Yeah. He's scared. Yeah. He's scared of this little liberal. From Greenville, North Carolina. <laughs> Sean Hannity. You're not, you're not liberal. I got your ticket, Sean. You're not liberal. I am. I know what's in your heart. And people never ask me, Tavares, how is it that you can w listen to conservative talk radio, watch conservative news, and not pull your hair out? Number one, I, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> and number two... I, 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 your hair, by the way. I, had, I used to have dreads, and I, I, I pulled them back too much. And, you know, some people... Do the comb overs and, and the, your and hair the, came out because you your dreads? No, nah, I got I have a cul de sac build up, you know. A cul de sac. I, <laughs> you know, I just refuse to look like George that. Jefferson. You do, you do have a cul de sac. You yeah. know what I mean? That's a, that's the last cue ball my wife likes it. My wife loves it. I can care less what anybody else thinks. That's all that so matters. Tavares came and sat down next to me, and I was like, I was I was like, man, you smell good. And you know what he said? He said, Oh, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, big hand, man. I love you guys, I man. Love you. Good why to why see isn't you. there more tolerance? I don't know. Oh, don't start a big political <laughs> conversation this morning. Hey, you know, I can change We're the all subject in a heartbeat. We don't do politics. All. We just have fun. All I okay. know, I know, I know. It's Friday. You know, you got to love me. You know what I mean? Get out of here. I like you guys. You did know, you, Trent. Did you get a free donut? I did, I did. Which one did you get? I got the one with the happy face on it. You know, the, I got oh, the uh, Stay Puff yeah. Marshmallow Man. Yeah, I got the, the Marshmallow right. Man. Reminded me well, of Ghostbusters. Well, hang around and uh, meet the number one offensive coordinator in America. Hey, I, I, right now I can't stand that guy right now, what he did uh, to Carolina. And, uh, You're a Carolina and, fan? A big Carolina fan. My wife I don't is agree a, with you on anything. My wife, no, no, but I love you in spirit. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is a pirate, you know what I mean? Well, so, hang around and just say, hey, why did you hang 70 on the Tar Heels? But don't forget what happened to you guys <laughs> back in the day now. Come on, you guys forget that. Hey, but don't bask forget. in your glory. The Pirates never forget. Bask we, in your glory. We don't, uh, we, don't, we don't get mad. We just get even. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> did they get even? Man, that offensive coordinator put something on us. But, hey, you know, I actually uh, work with Josh. Uh, Josh Hawkins. I work with that kid, the, the cornerback for ECU. Oh, yeah. Cornerback. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, it's good to see you. We got to get a break in. Good to see you. Tavares. Right, appreciate it. From the, uh, <laughs> from the Sean Hannity <laughs> Show. All right. 835. Again, Lincoln's on the way, and we'll have him here in just a couple minutes. Stay with us. More talk of the town on location this morning, live from Krispy Kreme. You still got time to get here and get a free donut and register to win the, uh, the tickets to the ECU UConn game coming up Thursday night. We'll be back live. All right, welcome back. We're on location at uh, Krispy Kreme, and Lincoln Riley has joined us, but uh, he's busy now because he's already in here signing autographs and stuff this morning. So we'll get Lincoln <laughs> in a second. Let me uh, let me mention uh, money for that autograph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, McGee, give us an update on the uh, on the prediction contest this week. And, yeah, you have uh, until uh, one o'clock tomorrow, which will be Saturday before the one o'clock kickoff between the Panthers and the Packers to go and get your predictions in for that game coming up Sunday, one o'clock at Lambeau. 
closest to the total score without going over $25 gift card to the Seahorse Restaurant. So log on to 94.3 the game's Facebook page to get that prediction in pronto. All right, very good. Welcome back. Remember, we're going to be at Krispy Kreme for another 20 minutes. If you get by here by 9 o'clock, you'll get a free Halloween or Ghostbusters donut this morning. You want a donut, Lincoln? I'll hook you up in a minute. All right, sounds How good. Are you? Sounds good. Link, Lincoln Riley, the offensive coordinator for the Pirates, is here. How you doing? I'm doing good. You tired? Sleepy? A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. He just walked in and said you were game planning till 2 o'clock last night? Yeah, everybody thinks the off week we go fishing or something, you know. Off week is not a good word for it. It's more like we just don't have a game. You know, everything else is. Well, it's uh, also kind of a strange schedule because you got a Thursday game. So you kind of slid everything back, uh, you know, like so like Wednesday was Monday, right? Exactly. Yeah, we're, uh, we've had to bump everything back. And then everything will be forward a little bit going this week. Sunday will be like, like a Tuesday for us, and, and, you know, and off we go. But the conference, you know, the conference took care of us with having some of the bye weeks before these early games, you know, which was good. And, and we, we knew this was coming. Um, we, we looked at the schedule before the season, and that's been a big part of it is adapting. And it's, it's one of those schedules that if, if you're not winning, it's, it's not going to be very much fun. And if you're winning with the, some of the time off and, and um, you know, able to rest these guys, able to get them caught up academically, just all the little things that come up throughout the season, um, you know, we're really enjoying the schedule thus far. Let me ask you, uh, Five and one now. You you got the off week uh, tomorrow, and then you play UConn coming up here on uh, Thursday night. Uh, I can say this: you won't. They're not very good. So uh, you know, it's a game that East Carolina certainly ought to ought to win. Did did you did you think at the beginning of the year that East Carolina could be this good? Did or did you not really have a, a sense that this would be a special season? I felt pretty confident that we would be able to beat any of those, you know, looking at the first half of the season, that we would be able to beat any of those guys. I mean, I didn't see anybody on there. Um, and we played some good teams, no doubt. But I, I felt like we were good enough that if we played well early that, that we'd be able to do that. Now, you know, thinking that and doing that is two different things. And uh, this group has come together early, I think. The amount of leadership that we have on both sides of the ball has has been a big part of that. Um, and then I think our our young guys slash new guys, you know, that haven't played much, they have played well faster than our, our group has in the past. And uh, and that's been the biggest part. I think it's our leadership. I think it's you know the development of our players. You know, recruiting guys that were ready, getting a couple of key J, uh, junior college guys that were ready to go. And uh, this team has just gelled pretty quickly. You know the. Um the way the season developed, you almost kind of wish that that South Carolina game would have been further down the yeah, schedule. Yeah. But you, you you lose to South Carolina, you, um, you you go up and win at Virginia Tech, and then you come here and blow out Carolina. And since then, you know, it's like everybody expects you guys to go out and put up 70 points. I mean, that's almost a curse at this point, isn't it? You go out and beat a conference team, uh, SMU, by 11 points that has played some really good teams. Mm -hmm. And everybody expected another 70-point performance. Everybody goes, well, you know, they didn't play that great. Yeah. But, I mean, I was looking at that game and thinking that, you know, it really wasn't that bad of a performance. The word flat kept coming up, and I'm like, I didn't think it was a flat performance. What What are your thoughts about that? Are the expectations now too high? Winning's hard. You know, I, you know, you ought to look at, you know, the team that's won however many of the last national championships, Alabama, you know, and I think Nick Saban came out this week and they were kind of grilling them for only beating Arkansas by one point on the road. He said, look, you know, you guys are crazy. I mean, it's hard to win on the road. You know, those other teams, they got coaches, they got scholarship players, you know, they, they practice. I, the weeks before we played them, I promise they went to practice and watched us on film and game planned us and it's hard to win and it's especially hard to win on the road. And, uh, you know, and that's part of it. So, you know, it's every game shapes up differently. It's not, well, this team beat this team by this many, and this team lost to this team by many. So this, it, it doesn't work like that. It's it's week to week. And so, you know, whatever you got to do to win, that's, uh, you know, our, our end goal is to win a championship, and you're going to have to win something like that. I know you don't want to harp on what's happened. We need to look ahead. you got a lot of games left. But was the uh, – was the – was the game against Carolina putting 70 points on the in-state rival, was that the highlight of your career, and number one? And number two, um, was that about the most perfect game that you've ever seen your offense play? 
We've played I, – I can think of some games where I thought maybe we played a little bit better. Um, the thing this year is we're more explosive. Um, we're making – you know, we're making bigger plays than we have in the past. And we've – when you're when you're like that, you're able to overcome some of your mistakes. You know, we made – I know a lot of people forget now and they look at the end, the end result. We were behind the chains a lot in that game. We had a lot of third and longs and second longs. And, and we were – we're able to overcome our mistakes, which is a good thing. I think we've played some cleaner games. That was one of the more explosive games that we've played. And, and when you get in a game like that where, you know, you compare it to like last week at South Florida, we, we played pretty well in the second half. I would argue we played better in the second half there than maybe we did either half against Carolina. But when you only get four possessions, you know, it is what it is. You know, whereas Carolina and you've got two fast-paced offenses going together, you're going to get more possessions. The numbers and points are going to be a little inflated on both sides. So um, part of it was who we were playing and the style of game it was. But, yeah, we, we were playing explosive. And, and I tell you, the, the, the crowd was unbelievable that day. I mean, that gets our guys juiced up, you know. And I know we've only got, I think, three home games left. I think maybe one more Saturday game. And, and we got to have three unbelievable crowds. I can't tell you all how much that, that means to our guys. Our guys, that, that gets our guys going. Yeah, I'm a little worried about the crowd on Thursday night. Thursday night games are always harder mm -hmm. because, you know, you, you wonder, since the game's on TV, if you're Charlotte and you're Greensboro and you're – Norfolk and Richmond fans are all going to come, yeah, you know. Yeah. That, 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 it's a little bit of a challenge. Sure. No, I know it is. And I, you was, know, wa I was watching, looking at the uh, crowd of that Pitt uh, Virginia Tech game yeah. last night. Pitiful. Yeah. No, it was. No, I, it's. Uh, we know it's a challenge. It's a challenge for everybody. But you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be as good as we talk about, then this team's got to be ready to play, and we gotta, we gotta pack that thing. I have two questions for you, <laughs> Coach. Excuse me. One, will you guys, will you watch the Temple Houston game tonight? Will you guys? Do you get the other watch games on TV like an, an American matchup, or you, do you just watch the regular film on that team? I know Temple's coming up. You don't play Houston this year, but Temple and Houston tonight, you guys going to watch that game at all? Yeah, we'll watch them. We'll, we will. We tend to watch either opponents, um, you know, guys that we know in the profession, um, or then on Sundays watching our guys in the pros yeah. when we get a chance catch a few clips of them, and that's about it. Um, we don't all – I don't think all of us watch a ton of football when we go home. You know, we get enough of that at work, and, and certainly we'll see it all on film. But – it's good seeing them live, you know, seeing – you can see some things on TV that you can't see on game film, the the motion they play with. You can, you know, get a feel for the different situations and what they're calling. And, and with it being a new team that we haven't played before, I think that, that helps. So, yeah, we'll, we'll check them out a little bit. Henry and I have talked about, you know, this being a special siege and every, uh, everything around uh, what's happening right now. And, and I think you're, you're seeing uh, perhaps two of the, the best – only the best combo I've ever seen here in – Shane Card and Justin Hardy with what the relationship those two guys have. I think sometimes Shane can just throw it and it just Justin just happens to be there at the right place, right time, all the time. Um, talk about, you know, uh, that that relationship, how much those guys work together in practice and, and uh, what do you think their their uh, their future holds for the next level? Well that relationship's, you know, five years in the making. You know, there's a lot of a lot of work behind the scenes that was done to, to forge that, that 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 nobody saw, you know, and um, they're two. What makes it fun about those guys is they're just two special human beings too. You know, I mean, they're they're talented players, and you know, I think, I, you know, I hope the fans here, and I think they do. I hope everybody appreciates them because it's uh, you don't get ones that come like that, um, you know, every year. You know, and with only three chances left to come see them play here, I, I hope everybody takes advantage of that. They're, uh, you know, they're uh, they're special. They're special guys. They lead us. They they do things the right way. They represent this university the right way. Um, I think they both have really bright futures at the next level. Um, I think, uh, you know, the next level is about, just like it is in college, it's about getting in the right fit. You know, I always compare, you know, I always talk to people when they ask about that. I, I mentioned, you know, Wes Welker, who played for us at Tech, mm -hmm. you know, play, did not get drafted, did not get invited to the combine. You know, everybody thought, well, he can't play at that level. It's system, this, that. He goes to San Diego does well they cut him you know goes to Miami plays sparingly and all of a sudden he gets in a good situation there in New England and now the guy's going to be probably a first ballot Hall of Famer I mean it's uh you know that's how it works you've got to get in the right system and then make the most of it and and uh, so you know I think if those guys can get in a good situation at the next level they're gonna they're gonna make a big impact you know your your, your first comment about um the fans coming out and watching Justin Hardy and Shane Carden I, I've said that Lincoln just about every week you know I've been around East Carolina football and college football a long time and you know this is a special opportunity for our fans 
and it's, it's going to be gone in the, in the blink of an eye. And people need to really appreciate what they're watching out there. I mean, you're, you know, we, we saw it with Jeff Blake his senior year. He blossomed and became a superstar, and you, you kind of felt like he was going to be a special player. And then David Garrard, we've seen it over the years, but, you know, I don't know that we've ever seen it with a combination of two guys like Shane Carden and Justin Hardy. I mean, we're looking at guys that we might be looking at playing in the NFL for years to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I think it's really special, and I think uh, – you know, add on top of that, you know, the first year in this in this conference, you know, us being right in the middle of the championship race, uh, you know, it's not important to the team, but I know it's important outside is, you know, the national ranking, the national attention, that all the national TV games. I mean, it's just, it's an unprecedented level. And that first impression, it's not everything, but it's, it's darn important too. And uh, I know, you know, the, the team, the administration, the fans, we need to all be geared up to making the best impression that we can outside because it's going to make a difference in the future. Has Shane uh, become better this year? Uh, he, he uh, you know, in the Virginia Tech game, all of a sudden we saw a vertical passing game we hadn't seen from him before. Uh, I assume that's something that you emphasized with him in the offseason, and he's just gotten really good at it now. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think a couple of things have improved with him. I think he's got a, you know, more complete understanding of not just his job, but, but how we want to attack people, you know, what people, what, what, um, you know, what people are doing to us in the games, being able to adjust. And then, um, and then, you know, the other thing about it is we've gotten a lot better around him. I mean, that's. I was that, going to say, he's got some yeah. <laughs> pretty darn good receivers, has he not? You know, there's been a couple of times here where we were a one or two man show a little bit at receiver yeah. Yeah. and, uh, you know, we, we've got some depth. We, we've worked hard to get, to get you know, six to eight guys at receiver that we feel pretty good about that can go win matchups. And I think you've seen that. You've seen different guys, you know, come in with big games. And, and uh, it seems like it's this guy this week and this guy that week. And I think in the future we're going to see more guys maybe that haven't made a lot of noise that are going to continue to. And that's, that's been a big goal for us is to upgrade our talent level at the skill positions and also up front. And so I think uh, – you know, having those weapons around Shane's making him more confident and play, you know, probably as good as he has. Well, it's certainly been one of the most fun uh, football season I, I can ever remember. And, it's, and to have something happen like this for East Carolina is very big for our program. And uh, I just want to say, I've, I've said this to uh, Ruffin, and, uh, I just want to thank you for all the hard work you've put into it. That. And, you know, as, as an old East Carolina guy, you know, it's been fun. But it's also been, um, you know, I'm just very appreciative of what you guys have been able to accomplish here. I mean, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Well, thank you. It, it, uh, Everybody it's doesn't see us. the budgets no. and what you have to work with. But oh. for you guys to, to not only be good, but to be this good is really an accomplishment that I think is, uh, is pretty extraordinary. Well, I appreciate it. You know, Ruffin's, Ruffin's stuck to it. You know, when a lot of people wouldn't have, when there were some tough times, he, he stuck with what we were going to do. He had the guts to do that against a lot of people telling him, you know, no, don't do it this way. And, uh, you know, we've all just kind of followed his lead. And uh, I think you're seeing some of the results of that right now. And I think you will for a long time to come. Do you guys talk about getting to that uh, access bowl game or is it something you don't talk about to the players? Everybody, all the uh, experts say, if you went out, you're going to the Peach Bowl. And of course, you still got a lot of football left to play. Is that something that you hang out there as a carrot for those guys as a motivating factor, or do you prefer not to use that and have them just focus on the next game? You know, we don't – it's not a daily thing we harp on, but we don't, we don't shy away from it either. I mean, if you, if you sit there and think those guys aren't hearing that on the outside or on social media or whatever, then, then you're crazy. I mean, I yeah. think you've got to embrace it a little bit. One of our goals is to, to win this conference, and the easiest way that we can win this conference is to – you know, is to win all these conference games. And without a conference championship, you know, you don't want to leave it up to a, you know, to a tiebreaker or this or that. And so, uh, you know, if we do that, we know what could potentially be at the end of it. And, you know, certainly that gets our guys excited and gets us excited as coaches. And not that we couldn't be more motivated anyway, but, uh, but, but that, does, uh, that does add a little bit of excitement to be able to go do that. We got, we got to get a break in, McGee. Hang on. We, let's get a break in. We'll come back because I don't want to run out of time. We got to draw for the tickets that we're giving away to the Yukon game. Can you hang I through a break for I three sure minutes? Can. We'll be I back sure uh, live at Krispy Kreme. Stay with us. Lincoln Riley's here with us. We'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back. Talk of the town here live on location at Krispy Kreme, East Carolina offensive coordinator uh, Lincoln Riley here with us. And uh, we got just a couple quick uh, minutes here, McGee. Right, what I, you got I, for I him? think that what makes you one of the best offensive coordinators in the country is the fact that people know the kind of offense you run, but they still can't figure you out because you come in and you add so many different wrinkles to it. But when you call a little razzle-dazzle razzle trick play, is that something you just happen to call on the spot or before the game? In that practice that week, you say, hey, we're going to run it at this point in the game, or you just think about it and call? No, it's, it's uh, you know, it, we, we've got some guys that are, uh, you know, that have some quarterback background with them. We've got some skill guys that give you a lot of versatility, and that's something, again, we've been explosive enough that, that you feel good about calling those because we can – you know, if we if we if we mess it up or whatever, we have a chance to make up for it. So no, we're we're not scared to call it. Our guys enjoy it. It kind of gets them juiced up, and and we have several of them going into each game, and and uh, we like to fire them away. All right, we got a uh, Jennifer Little uh, hand us the uh, thing. We're gonna let Lincoln draw. Right. We got two tickets to uh, the uh, East Carolina the UConn bowl. game in the Jennifer's Dog Bowl. <laughs> Lincoln, pick out a winner Let's go there. Right there. All right, who we got? Looks like. Mangus Daniels. Oh my God! It's it's Tavares, Mangus. Yeah. Tavares, Tavares from the Sean Hannity show who just left here. Nice. Ma Mang <laughs> I'm not giving him free tickets. <laughs> Link, yeah, I'll, uh, Mangus, I'll get them to you. All right, we are done. Thanks to Amanda at Krispy Kreme. Don't forget the Halloween donuts. Lincoln Riley, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thanks, Thanks again for, for all your hard work. Thank and, you. And uh, what a great season. It's been thank a lot you. of fun. All right, everybody have a great weekend. See you Monday.